Welcome to Thinking Outside the Box, brought to you by Virginia Porta, independent demonstrator with Stampin' Up! from Dream in Color 72207.com. Tonight, we're going to make a box to hold some Halloween goodies. And the first step in creating your box is to figure out the size of the box you want to make. For this particular example, the box base will be four and a half inches by two and a quarter inches. That's the size of the Reese's Cups. And then I'm going to stack two in the box, and so I'm going to make the box about an inch and a half tall. So to do that, I'll start with the dimensions on the length and the width, and add one and a half twice to both axes, which means I'll add one and a half inches to each edge, giving me a total base piece of material starting with four and a half inches plus one and a half and one and a half is seven and a half, two and a half inches plus one and a half and one and a half is five and a, excuse me, two and a quarter is five and a quarter. Now for the top, we're not going to make it an inch and a half deep, we're only going to make it an inch deep. So instead of adding an inch and a half, we'll add an inch to each side. So our top piece will start at four and a half plus two is six and a half, and two and a quarter plus two is four and a quarter. So we'll start by cutting our base, our, our box base out of cardstock. The one thing about a box this size is that it's nice to fit it in to, you can get two bases out of one eight and a half by 11 piece of cardstock. If you get much larger than this, you're going to have to go to a 12 by 12 piece of cardstock. Now, the other thing I want to tell you is that that the measurements that we started out, the four and a half and the two and a quarter, will make it a very snug, a very snug fit on the boxes. So, if you want your lid to come on and off pretty easily, you can either add about an eighth of an inch in both directions, or you can to the top, or you can subtract about an eighth of an inch in both directions to the bottom. Either way works as long as you know that your base, your <clears throat> box bottom will hold the items that you're trying to make. Now, <clears throat> now that you've got your front, your top, and your bottom cut, you come back and on the bottom, since it's a, an inch and a half deep, you'll score on the all four edges at an inch and a half. On the top, you're going to score at one inch because the box is only the box top is only one inch deep. Now you're going to fold all four of your edges and then come back with a bone folder to make those nice and crisp folds. That's going to help when you start to cut the flaps for the box tops. You don't absolutely you don't have to do it, but it really does help it come together much more effectively. So I, I recommend the bone folder and then I also recommend some snips, um, some small snips. So you're going to cut on those pieces to create the hinge. Now that piece will stay That'll be the outside of the box right there. And so you just cut up um, between the corner and the long piece on the end. And do the same thing on the other end. So your, your cuts are going to be symmetrical. I recommend you doing it that way. Now the other thing you're going to see is you're also going to see that I'm cutting out some wedges. That allows the box to go together a little bit more smoothly without so much um, material being jammed up into the corners. So you can see from looking at this uh, layout here that it actually is a pretty uh, pretty basic, which you can see. Now the other thing to remember is when you start putting your adhesive on, I'm going to recommend that this is actually uh, Stamp and Seal Plus, which is one of our heavy duty adhesives, or you can use tear and tape or something like that. So on the box bottom, since it's cardstock, it doesn't matter which direction it goes together. But on the top, you want to start by putting your adhesive, you want to lay your box top down so that the part that's showing right here, the black diamonds, that's going to be the outside of my box. So you'll repeat the process here with trimming uh, the little wedges out. Uh, and then you'll put your adhesive on each of the flaps and build the top of your box. And so what you'll see now is the box coming together. The flaps fold to the inside and then the, the solid piece on the outside makes it square up on the ends. So now you can see that these two Reese's cups will fit into this box nice and neatly. Now to finish up our project, I'm making three of these actually to send to my college freshman and his roommates. 
So we're going to finish those by adding a belly band to each of the boxes. Um, what I've decided to use is the black glitter paper. And I cut a band width about an inch and a half wide because it's just, I eyeballed it. And I decided to go around it the short way as opposed to the long way. And then I've used the um, Halloween stamps with the matching dies to create the uh, little uh, sentiment plaque. And I'll, I'll adhere all that in a minute. Now I'm using regular Stampin' Seal to start the belly band. And what you'll do is just crease it a little bit, maybe an inch to an inch and a half in, just to start it. And so we'll put adhesive on the inside of that. Put a couple of nice pieces there and then tap that down on the box. Now you're going to have your seam on the top of your box, but that's going to be okay. Now as you wrap it around the box, crease it, each of the corners, and then You'll use the Stampin' Seal again to create the seam on top. Now we'll trim off an extra little piece there. I did not measure this piece. I just cut a, a quarter, an inch and a half wide and moved on. So trim that off and then your seam will be on the top of the box. Now with the glitter paper, you won't see the seam and even with cardstock, you might not see the seam, but you're going to come back and put your sentiment with the matting behind it. So let's start with that. I, like I said, I cut this out of a the designer series paper that is for the Halloween season. And because we're putting it down on the glitter paper, I'm going to use the Stampin' Seal Plus because that'll stick to the glitter paper a little bit better. And then, uh, of course, the ends will stick to the box. So we'll put that on there. And then I've stamped on the, the sentiment that says Happy Halloween and Trick or Treat. But we're going to adhere those with some dimensionals because we love dimensionals. And you know what? Dimensionals are great. They, they don't add a lot of weight to your project. And they're perfect for adding a little bit of uh, layering. And obviously, as its name allows, it provides some dimension. So that's great. And then after we do that, we're going to come back and the dies from the Halloween die set create bats, three sizes of bats, and some spiders, as well as the sentiment uh, pieces. And so we're going to embellish this box with some bats. I used spiders on some of the other, on the couple of the other boxes. And the best thing to use to adhere these are going to be either dimensionals. Um, or the glue dots. I believe I'm going to the big. I'm going to put the big bat up uh, with a dimensional, and then tack his wings down with glue dots. And then um, I'm looking for my glue dots now. I, they have somehow managed to walk away from my desktop. That amazes me how they disappear in just a matter of seconds. I may just start having to call them Houdini dots. So I'm using my take a pick tool, which I think is the best thing for getting the glue dots off the backing and then popping the backing off and then pop the backing off your dimensional and then you just pop it back on there and lay it on there just like that. You'll be able to see all this when we get to the end of the video. And then, um, oh, actually I did use a spider on this one, but here's where I made a critical error. So right here, I'm showing you the stamps in the um, Night of Magic, Hallow's Night Magic, and then the matching dies, uh, which you can see. They're the bats and the bigger bats, and the spider and the flower. So uh, when I got ready to do this, I did not grab my black dimensionals as I should have. So I have a white dimensional on the back of my spider, and you're going to see that that becomes a problem because it's too large and I could not pull it off to save my life and so I just trimmed it to uh, get the excess off so that we could go ahead and put it on there and I figure a bunch of 19 year old boys aren't really going to look at that very closely and that's kind of what I'm counting on at this point but of course if you can put a glitter spider on a treat box 
you must. That's something you just don't want to waste. So we're getting ready to, we're wrapping up the project, and I'm going to have some, some pictures of the finished products in a minute. You'll see them, you'll, you will see them stacked on my table, and then I've got some still pictures. But while you're here, I hope that you enjoyed this presentation and this little tutorial on how to put together the boxes. And if you do, please like this video and subscribe to my channel. I'm working on trying to add subscribers to my channel. And I plan on coming back and doing some more videos on some Christmas treat boxes. So there's one of the finished products and the other. So thank you again for spending some time with me this evening. Uh, again, it's Virginia Porta with Stampin' Up! And I'd love to help you out if you don't already have a demonstrator. Bye-bye!